a car is going around the turn of radius 80 feet where the road is uh, banked. Now I'm going to change it to banked. Um, so let's change this. Where the road is banked and the coefficient of static friction is 0.8 and mu k is 0.6. What is V max before car slides? Now, so I'm going to change it. I'm going to keep the coefficient of static friction the same, coefficient of kinetic friction the same, except I'm going to make the road banked. And I'm going to now ask, what is the V max before car slides? And then change this to, what is the V max before car slides up the, up the road? And then what is V min before car slides down the road? Uh, there's two questions now. Before, what is V min before car slides down the road? <clears throat> so the side view here looks like this. Um, something like this, let's say. The car is going like this. And again, it doesn't have to make a complete uh, circular path for this to work. It can make a portion of a circular path. You will notice oftentimes a freeway ramps are banked. Like when you, when you take one freeway and you're trying to connect to another freeway and you go up a ramp and then there's like a bridge like this, it goes like this. You notice that it usually it's ramp, uh, it's banked like this so you can make the turn more easily that way. So the car is going on a turn like this and it's kind of coming out towards you and it's going around and it's going into the board right here. Okay. Oh, this one I need to give you the banking angle, right? So let's say where the road is banked, let's say 20 degrees. So let's say this is 20 degrees. Okay, so let's draw this a little bit bigger here so we can see what's going on. Okay, so we got the normal force. This kind of resembles the problem that we did back in chapter five with the block inclined plane. However, there is one big, huge difference. In this problem, we want the car not to slide up and down the incline. We want it to be stationary. Which direction should the acceleration be? In, in towards the center not up and down the incline, okay? In the uh, incline plane, plane problems that we were doing, we, we were putting a block on an incline, letting go of it, or maybe pushing it down or pushing it up, and then we were asking what is its acceleration along the incline, you know? Uh, in this problem, we want to make the car go around the circle, but not slide up and down, right? So. We have mg, and this time I'm going to, since the acceleration is towards the center, I'm going to put my x and y axis, the regular x and y axis, not the rotated x and y axis. Remember in chapter 5 we used the rotated x and y axis to make them along the acceleration. So this time it's a regular x and y axis. So. Now I'm going to answer the question. Let's answer one by one. Let's answer what is the maximum velocity the car needs before, before it starts to slide up the road. So what happens is when the car begins to go too fast, the friction force is down, right? The friction force is down because as the car begins to go faster and faster, its tendency is to move outward, right? To move out, uh, uh, to move outward from the circle, to have a bigger radius. So as it, as it begins to go too fast, it needs friction to push it down the incline, to prevent it from sliding up, right? 
So uh, the maximum velocity that it's going to have is going to occur when the friction force equals mu s n. That's going to tell you what is the maximum velocity that it can have. So let's break the forces down into their components now. If this angle is theta, this angle is also theta. So the friction force makes an angle theta here below the x-axis. And then this is 90 minus theta, and then this is theta also. So I say some of the forces in the x direction is equal to mv squared over r. So along the horizontal x direction, they're equal to mv squared over r. So we have n sine theta is in the positive x direction to the right. And then mu s n uh, co uh, cosine theta, that's this component right here, mu s n cos theta equals mv squared over r. So those two forces, the banking angle provides the normal force with the ability to help make the motion, right? The horizontal component of the normal force, together with the horizontal component of the friction force, is helping the car to turn. And then along the vertical direction, some of the forces in the y direction equals 0. So along this direction, you don't want the car moving. So you want the n cos theta minus the mu s n sine theta that's the vertical uh, y component of the friction force, minus the mg equals 0. So to solve this, our eventual goal is to come up for an equation for what is the maximum v that you can have, independent of the normal force. So we don't want the, the answer to be in terms of the n. So what you do here is you can factor out the n, and you'll get mg over uh, this, whatever's left here, and then you can then factor this into this n over here, substitute it into this n. So you, we need to factor the n out. You'll have sine theta plus mu s cosine theta. And then when the n factors out, you substitute what that is. And then factor out the, uh, cancel the m. And this gives you the equation for v max. v max equals square root of rg came up with the general equation. And then we can put in the, uh, the numbers here for our case and see what the maximum velocity is. OK, so let's see here. Let's put them in and see what we get. V max is going to equal square root of 80 times uh, 32 times uh, co uh, sine of 20 plus 0.8 cosine uh, 20 divided by cosine 20 minus 0.8 sine 20. That's going to tell you what the maximum is that the car can go at.